Welcome to The Inevitable, a podcast by Motor Trend. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of The Inevitable. This is Motor Trend's podcast about the future of the car, the future of mobility, where we're going, how we're going to get there, and this vodcast is brought to you by the all-electric Nissan Aria, inspired by the future, designed for the now. And speaking of the future, we're still doing CES. Yes, we are. This is our last series of interviews from CES. Uh, they're great. We finished strong. We have uh, two really great guests I will introduce to you in just a second. But first, let's cover off the question of the week, yeah. which comes to us from Instagram follower at Cars and Cycling, also known as Justin Schultz, who says, hey, is there any chance that you'll chat with someone from Formula E? I can answer that. Yes. Yes, we will. Uh, yes, we will. The question is, who do you want? Because we know a, f a fair number of Formula E, like just personalities. We know the people that are driving. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, former driver uh, Marino Franchitti, who we've done work with before, and a good friend of mine. Yep. Um, we had uh, the guy from, uh, uh, um, you know, the Nissan uh, racer movie. Oh yes. He did Formula E. I'm we have yes, and we yeah. There's several several uh, friends in the industry that have worked for different Formula E Formula E companies or um, OEM partners. And then, of course, there's a founder, Alejandro Agag, who we've profiled in Motor Trend. He's been on our power list a number of times. So, hey, thank you, Justin. Great question. Uh, anybody else out there, if you want to hear f uh, from someone on the cutting edge of motorsports, of electric motorsports, send us who you want us to chat with from Formula E. We'll start working on it right away. And if you have any other questions, we need them for our question of the week segment. And so yes. you can drop them in my Instagram, at Johnny Lieberman. His, which at is at... Lowdown, L-O-H-D-O-W-N. How come you, you never did low road? I've always wanted to ask you that. Dude, it's there's so many more, low... It's so much more car centric. With, there's, well, that's great. I wanted low... Low road. I wanted low fidelity. Take the low, low road. Low fidelity? But like take low the low road. Fi? If low you knew fi, Ed, yeah. low road is... Hey, listen, when I... Um, I, I was in high school. <laughs> all I have an older brother, and younger sister. We all ran for student body uh, government in high school, and the the the, the low family tagline was "Aim high, vote low." Uh, see, yeah, it's amazing. It's great. It's so, great. Uh, okay. Speaking yeah. of, not speaking of, let's talk a little bit about our guests this week. Again, we had two episode, two thirty minute conversations with some very high profile people within the software defined vehicle space. Okay, so this is something I'm gonna you're gonna hear a lot more from me. I've been talking about it for. Uh, to the Motor Trend staff, they're sick of hearing it from me. SDVs, software-defined vehicles, what's coming in the future. And at CES, we talked to a guy from AWS mm. and another guy from a very small company no one's ever heard of for yeah, inventing startup. the car. Yeah. Still a startup known as Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first up is Stefano Marzani. Okay. He is worldwide tech lead for software-defined vehicles for AWS, Amazon Web Services. And what you probably don't know is that, I mean, Amazon, they're, you know, like Mercedes is a new company, they're a small little internet startup. Yes. Uh, like, y your car will be running on Amazon. Yes. It's kind of wild, and it's sort of weird to think about, but, like, man, they got their tentacles everywhere. everywhere. There's so much Everything. data flowing yeah. in your car, outside of your car, up into the cloud. Being that processed. Of, of, yes, that, of course... Amazon has an interest here, and this guy, Stefano Marzani, who is from Italy, uh, he's also the winner. <laughs> well, you'll tell you'll tell with his accent, but he's he's a great guy. He's the winner of our um, second annual Software Defined Vehicle Innovator Awards. That's true. We threw a big party. Big and party, really CS. The party, but it was a lot of fun, actually. So uh, he, as fun as a software defined party could ever be. This actually, this podcast has two winners. So we have Stefano, who won this year, and Magnus from Mercedes Benz. He won one of our awards last year. So this is like the super big brain episode of the podcast. Um, it's it's very interesting. To be honest, it's hard to comprehend, and we're very uh, thankful for Stefano for breaking it all down for us and being so patient about just exactly how this cloud computing system works and what it means for you, for your data, it's going into the car, and how they're setting all the OEMs and other different partners 
up for this this massive transition? I mean, I think you know what it means for the future of the car. It's 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 something that I don't think a lot of people don't think about is like how much is going up to the cloud and coming down from the cloud. Yes, you know it's fascinating. So, let's hear from Stefano, and then we'll come back and chat for a little bit about Magnus Osberg at Mercedes Benz. So, Stefano Moranzani, thank you so much for joining us. Also. Congratulations, you brought the trophy. Oh! You are Motor Trends, one of Motor Trends 2024 Software Defined Vehicle Innovators, uh, class of 2024. Thank you so much. Uh, you work in, I'm not, I don't want to uh, <laughs> butcher you because you have a pretty long title. Uh, What's your title? Worldwide Tech Lead Automotive for AWS, Amazon Web Services. Correct. Did I do it? More or less. A worldwide tech lead for software defined vehicles in AWS. Yes. Well, you were almost there. Almost there, of course. Yeah, How did I miss software defined vehicles, right? Okay, yeah. so people, you know, most people know Amazon. I get my packages, <laughs> my TV, <laughs> and maybe I got a website and it's hosted by Amazon. What, cars? What, the software, huh? Yes, can you give us just well, a what real is, How does Amazon do anything with cars? High yeah. level of, for wha of what you do with AWS. Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for having me, and the congratulations for the awesome job uh, you're doing to democratize all these things. Thank you. These thank complex you. things. Yes. So that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank so first you. of all, thank you. Okay. Second, AWS. So we are Amazon Web Services, and we provide uh, compute resources, networking, storage to automotive customers. So, and if you think about cars nowadays, they produce uh, tons of data, they require compute simulations from uh, CFD in order to get the aerodynamics right to uh, neural networks uh, to go and produce uh, advanced driving assistance systems, uh, so safety features, for example, uh, down to, um, yeah, all these kind of things are now mostly done in cloud. Collect the data, store the data, right? So those are the things and services we started to promote and uh, to, automo to the automotive sector and we have awesome customers that are buying them. Uh, right. Big times, because it's a very efficient way to do compute, storage, and networking uh, for, uh, for them. So in other words, Amazon Web Services is very good at taking data and then processing it, mm -hmm. uh, warehousing it, but also like doing something active with it and then returning a result that then the OEMs Absolutely. can say, oh, that means do X. You, you nailed it perfectly. We call it uh, the big loop. All right, great, that's good interview. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you nailed it. <laughs> uh, so that's fantastic. Phew, no. all right. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's, that's, that's exactly it. Okay. So, and uh, it's one of the big, uh, you know, the vision that we had two years ago when we started with our SDV approach was to implement the big loop, right? So big loop, what does it mean? It means that uh, all the car, the car produced data uh, that needs, it must be used to improve, uh, again, safety uh, safety functionalities, produce uh, innovative user experiences for the passengers, for the driver, uh, you know, all the innovation that is happening, digital innovation that is happening, that requires data, right? So this data needs to be collected, Got it. software needs to be generated, software needs to be deployed inside the car, and everything starts again. That's why it's a big loop, right? So, and the process. So. Okay, if this might be new to somebody who's listening to us or watching the, watching our YouTube. And they're like, well, I, I, I didn't authorize this. Like, what, this is all my data. Like, wh <laughs> like what, what do you say to people who might be concerned about, well, A, I didn't know I was generating so much data. Mm -hmm. B, yeah. I'm, uh, my, my <laughs> grandmother got hacked. Some guy from like, a foreign country called and, and she gave him a bunch of money. Like, it, it, what, what are their safety concerns? What, what, what's my exposure? Do you have... What do you tell people who are concerned about the volume of yeah. personal data perhaps that's being transmitted? So there's a formal answer and an informal one to that. The informal one is uh, you always have uh, and be very clear about the consent of the people to use their data. Okay? Yeah. The, their data is always there. So it's the owner of the data is the, the, the consumer, the driver, the owner of the car and so on. Right. But they need to give, be aware and give consent to use the data to erogate a service. So okay. that's the informal part. The formal part is uh, there are regulations. So GDPR in Europe, California has their own uh, uh, regulations and we conform with that, right? So we have, for example, for GDPR, we have a pretty complete GDPR center on AWS where we engage with our customer to explain what uh, we do 
to preserve uh, the customer data, security, privacy and everything. What they need to do, because there's a clear separation of responsibility. Again, we provide the infrastructure, but we have zero visibility and we can't access what the customer are doing their own virtual private network, as we call them in cloud, right? Mm. Obviously. So that's it, their responsibility to take care of it and how they protect the data. But we are not ignoring it. Right. We are providing good practices and uh, we are continuously work in what we call the well-architected framework, really to say, hey, you did this, let's do a review to see if everything is properly addressed in terms of architecture, in terms of uh, Security. Key management, uh, security, and stuff. So. And, and we should clarify, when you say customer, because AWS is fundamental, the, the end user, the consumer, our audience, yeah. the guy driving the car, will never know or understand, no. be, have no visibility into what AWS is doing. Your customer is the, is the, is the car company. Car primarily. company is uh, yeah. tier ones. Tier Those one are the suppliers. customers for us. Yes, yes. your Bosch, your It's a B2B relation. It's a yes. B2B relation. And we've talked, we've, you know, you're, I think you are our fifth guest of CES on this podcast, and like, you know, one guy from Electra was talking about how they're you know, they make a virtual replica of your battery in the cloud. Yeah. Uh, we just had Mobileye on, and Mobileye, they're, you know, they're creating this, uh, you know, a virtual map of the, the world with local driving behavior. So all that is, theoretically, could be data that is stored in an AWS system, processed using your hardware, um, but then they, you know, you, you don't have, you're not looking at that map unless it's like a review period. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's I exactly also tell right. people who get concerned about it and like really want to get uh, upset. I'm like, honestly, you're like, <laughs> you're like this tiny little thing in it. They call these data lakes. You're yeah. like, you're like a, a water molecule in there, and you're yeah, really yeah. not that special, Karen. But I get it. I get it. Yeah. You don't want to well, minimize concerned. it. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah okay. They, the especially when you do a autonomous vehicle development, um, they, they have test fleets. And they produce terabyte uh, data per hour. <laughs> right. So you can imagine the quantity of data oh, wow. coming from LIDARs, radars, and everything. So, but right. again, uh, yeah. Okay. So let's talk just a little bit about, um, you know, why we're all here. So, you know, we did. Well, actually, real quick. Okay. Uh, this <laughs> is because, uh, you know, I, I remember when, like, you know, I got a computer, the hard drive was one gigabyte, and I, I, spent, <laughs> I spent a little extra money, you know. I was like, oh. But, like, how much vehicle data is produced globally per day, or I don't even know how you measure it. Like, how, how many, what are we actually, if, Exa, it, exabytes if a fleet about? is doing a terabyte, like, what? Yeah. how much are we talking? I think we are uh, probably in the order of petabytes. Petabyte. So a petabyte yeah. would be, so you go, you go giga. And peta. Then peta, no, a thousand giga, giga, giga tera, yeah. peta. Yes. Yeah, okay. Giga tera, peta. Okay. Yeah, per that's day. The, that's per, per day, I don't know, but. Okay. Um, between Terra and Peta. Okay, okay. No, okay. That's, uh, that's the thing, but because if you think so of, of the amount. It's a humongous amount. It's a humongous, yeah. It's, uh, and if you think about uh, the, the amount of connected vehicles, uh, we are already in the order of uh, tens of millions. So it's an easy calculation. Let's say mm -hmm. that uh, each vehicle transfers, uh, right. I don't know, 10 megabytes, sure. uh, 100 megabytes a day. 100 is easier, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Um, Okay. A lot, yeah. So let's <laughs> let's let's shift gears a little bit here. So we we're here at CES as Motor Trend, trying to wrap our heads around the future of the car, mm -hmm. software-defined vehicles. You're here. You have a huge footprint. Huge. You're also yes. uh, partners with like everybody. Like you have your your good friends with a lot of the OEMs. They have a wall that shows everyone they're partnered with, and yeah. it's 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 like a hundred. Oh yeah. People yeah, here. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Big, com big yeah. company. Matter heard Amazon. Oh uh, Amazon. Yeah. Uh, but you also have made some news, right? You you announced, Amazon Web Services announced um, a partnership between Stellantis and BlackBerry and AWS on specifically digital digital cockpit. Absolutely. Right? So digital cockpit is like, I feel like if a software-defined vehicle, the key characteristic is defined as uh, OTA, got to have OTA, got to have over-the-air updates, and that, that that's like the, the, ba the fundamental yeah. building block. OTA in real life. In real life, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Um, the next step, that the next battleground is um, digital cockpit. It's what's Absolutely. going on inside the car, especially on this path to a autonomy where you might have more time on your hands to enjoy the surroundings of your car because you're not so focused on driving because the car might be doing some of it or all of it. Yeah. Um, what are you doing with Stellantis and BlackBerry? And then how do you see for the consumer what digital, co how it's going to evolve in the next five to 10 years? Because it's going to get Crazy, right? We don't yeah. even know how wild it's going to yeah, get. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, 
quiz. No, absolutely. We are going back, by the way, on to one of the topics we discussed uh, during our panel at the Los Angeles Auto Show, right? Yes. If you yes. remember about this discussion about the communities of developers. Right. And this is super important. I think it's uh, probably the pivotal moment for the automotive industry. Because oh, that's, this sounds important. Yeah, this is, this is <laughs> to me, it's uh, really important. And uh, if there's one thing that CES uh, is really highlighting this year, is cockpit development. And uh, it's completely changing the practice of developing software for cockpits in cars. It's a flip. I will explain why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, this is exactly, you can see here at the BlackBerry Boot, this implementation, and uh, you see the nice uh, browser. It's a browser. It's, you have a browser, you have a browser, right. I have a browser. I can point to an IP address, and I have the cockpit. I visualize it, so I can interact with it. Right, we have touch screens in our boot. You can um, load up Android, you can load up uh, Yocto with uh, Qt, um, all these kind of technologies for cockpit, interact with it. We can achieve up to 60 frames per second, streaming from the data centers to the browser. So full fluid movements on the indicators and everything. That's uh, kind of uh, the moment that everybody is waiting for because to develop that kind of system before, you needed to have a physical component, a rack with the displays, the ECU attached to it. You will see some of them in, in our boot. And who can work with that? Each of these costs a minimum $20,000. Okay. who can work on it five people and it's how much can you test on it very very lot very, not a lot and that's why the car is still very poorly tested as a system okay, okay. there that is completely virtualized by the technology that uh, blackberry brought uh, brought uh, that is the cunix hypervisor and that we loading up in our data centers with all the resources to fully virtualize that uh, ecu in a virtual ecu Whoever has a browser now can develop an application for that. Why? Oh, okay. Because the, that's not a prototype. That's exactly the same production software that will later on go in the car. So you flip the process. You start with the software artifact, and only at the end of the process you deploy it on a real hardware for final testing. But uh, there's a very nice quote from uh, a a video that I did with BMW. BMW uses this uh, methodology to develop their uh, new BMW S9 on both the BMW and Mini. And uh, we have a video, we just released a video about it. And uh, there's a nice ex <laughs> quote from them, from Philip, the, the guy that worked on it, saying, hey, uh, you know, before we needed to have the whole box uh, with all the issues and everything. Now, everybody that has a browser can create software for our infotainment system and everybody in BMW has a browser. Right. So from, I don't know, 100 developers to yeah. everybody. Yeah. That's the way we need to create communities. That's where we should expect innovation coming, right? From this uh, activation of a community of developer that can finally, finally develop software as an ecosystem for cars. It sounds a lot like you're, it's like democratizing this, this capability yeah. and it's in some ways what like the mobile phone, like the iPhone unlocked yeah. with an SDK and, and, and you know, you guys provide the framework, you and BlackBerry provide the framework and you uh, agree to some standards Absolutely. and then the smart people, the interested parties, it's, it's, it's up to their, their imagination. Yeah. What they create. Right. And then you end up at the, as the end result and the key, this is, we've talked about it a, a lot before, you know, the, it's not a great analogy, but software-defined vehicles is the idea that cars are like smartphones on wheels, right? Okay, we can work with that a little bit, and... Well, it, yeah, no, like the, the, the great app hasn't even been conceived of yet. Right, Like, like, in, it, like yes. Instagram. Uh, uh, yeah, I always say, whoever will have a, have a image in TikTok, right. and uh, right. Steve Jobs well, yeah, the yeah. iPhone. The, right. one, the, right. one that, the one that I always think about is, after the iPhone came out, and then the App Store came out, everyone's like, everyone thought, oh, iPhone, uh, it, no keyboard, glass screen, oh my god. No, the big deal was the App Store, because yes. then three years later, yes. I'm standing in Manhattan, and I punch up this weird app called Uber, yes. and some yeah. stranger right. drives up in his Camry, no, and no, no. It picks me up. Uh, it takes it me to. It was a black car. Didn't smell. Guy was wearing a suit and tie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah sure, yes. Uber was great for about six months. Oh yeah, yeah. and and that was the that was like the <laughs> now. <mo> oh yeah, <laughs> that was like the mind blowing thing that nobody ever. No, no, no like TikTok right? and Instagram. Think about how many hours of your life you've burned on these 
things that didn't couldn't have existed yeah. before the smartphone. So there's totally. going to be car apps that no one's thought of yet. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because okay. because the software defines the vehicle. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yes, yeah. that's exactly. And I use the same analogy. So I say, okay, if I need to develop uh, an app for my iPhone, I just open my Mac. I have the emulator of the iPhone. I do my work. Right. Um, does everybody, uh, any developer, right. so has the doubt that he's not working on the real, so the real phone? So now you have the BMW emulator. Okay. Yeah, right. Right. exactly right. So or in this case, the news right. being Stel Stellantis and what they're yes. doing in there, which is, to be honest, is, is wild because I know Stellantis is somewhat late to the EV party. Like, we're still waiting on their, their next generation of their, their muscle cars, and we're going to see a, a, a Ram uh, electric pickup truck coming very soon. But their digital cockpit game has been actually been, been quite strong. Like, they, they have they've got, they've got sharp graphics. They, they, generally speaking, like, you know, I think... You connect, right? The first couple versions were a little bit. Eh, uh, but they were, but but, but they had they were big and they were they big beautiful. buttons and they kind of worked and even from back in 2011. Like it, it yeah. sort of worked well. Right. You know, it, uh, it looked good. And so. now we're given the this this toolkit, this development process that's gonna. I think my understanding is speed everything up. Um, we should see. I mean, uh, leaps and bounds in this experience mm -hmm. uh, in the car. Again, this is. It's it's hard to for our audience to like. What are you guys even talking about? You know, the cloud, the, the 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 physical touch point will be the screens. The screens will be the things Absolutely. you see in front of you, and then going forward, all these voice controls that were being promised about how you can talk to Gen AIs and and it's it's beyond yeah. um, ordering you like you know telling you you know which direction to go. They can actually like order you make dinner reservations or plans yeah. and this and that for you. So. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's and uh, there are of course uh, other elements to that. Uh, so um, one of the first uh, we are working with a vast amount of tier ones uh, right on this because uh, you, you come to our boot, you see a virtualized solution from Panasonic, uh, Skipgen, Vskipgen, uh, Continental, Marelli, and others. Marelli is a year that we introduced that. We launched it at the, third, at the last CS, CS 2023. They used it, deployed it. They started to measure some KPIs around it. They had a seventy percent reduction in time mm. to develop a software feature, 7-0. 30% wow. reduction in cost of the prototyping phase. Those are big numbers, right? So, and mm. you really see the effects of SDV because if you, can, if you can achieve that, you can start to contain the cost, uh, going faster, produce uh, better code, uh, better quality, and so on. So it's, it's really, a, again, a pivotal moment to me. It's yeah. a game-changing yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, scenario. I know you're not at the position to speak on behalf of your customers, which are the, a lot of the car companies, but uh, given this efficiency and cost reduction, do, is this uh, something that the consumer will maybe feel at the bottom line or, or you know, hard to say? <laughs> it's hard to say. I think it's, uh, mm, again, there's an aspect to it uh, that is uh, um, as well the quality of the software and that uh, deals with the cloud and why the cloud, because again, you can't test uh, just using these boxes as hardware or hardware in the loop rigs as they are called, right? And that con is conducive to a very poorly tested product, right? So up to a few years ago, the system coverage of a car, so meaning how much the car is tested in all the possible use cases and everything, is around 20%, 20, 25%. It's a very low number. That's why you have all these recalls that are expensive for the sector in the order of billions each year. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, again, if you can scale out in cloud, if you can use, uh, again, with this virtual cockpit, we can scale testing, uh, you know, replicating this virtual cockpit in the order of hundreds thousand to perform every kind of weird thing with them to try to fault inject, uh, do a cybersecurity, right. Right. we can really deeply test that, right, even before the physical component is available. That's a, it's a big value for consumers. It's not, uh, let's say, the fancy app that you see there, but uh, the increase of uh, on quality is important because it's a car, so it's a it's a thing that is delicate from some aspects of it as right. a product. So right, right, right. important. Right. And is is that testing this virtual cockpit? Is that is it is it accurate to say it's part of the bigger picture when you're talking about uh, the amount of testing? Yeah. that you can do virtually ahead of time. Is that part of this digital twin yes, concept absolutely. too, right? Which, exactly is, which, is, which is every part, not just the cockpit. Exactly. From design, production design, to the actual the ma manufacturing yeah. design, through the manufacturing, and then even supporting um, 
a after sale, right? Because you will have a, a, a digital, the actual virtual replica of the vehicle yep. somewhere in the cloud. Absolutely. Okay. Again, you see that uh, very evidently in our boot, uh, where we have, uh, again, last uh, CES we presented uh, POCs, uh, single ECUs that were virtualized in digital twin and everything. This year we are presenting systems. So we have up to three ECUs. One, for example, that enables a complete end-to-end -end, uh, um, workflow to define uh, battery management uh, algorithms. You have the cockpit, where you can launch maybe a new sport mode uh, for the car that communicates with the vehicle control unit, that communicates with the battery management system. Uh, all three of the whole thing happens in cloud. There's no physical thing. Huh. But it's uh, immediately deployable because uh, we have this aspect that we call parity in terms of environment. So the cloud environment, we made it in a way that hosts the same software and uh, systems that are inside the ECUs. Mm -hmm. So you can perform full system testing. All of it? No. A big chunk of but it. But a lot of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Fascinating. Fascinating. Okay. And then, so, j just the, for, the, for, the, for the, again, the consumer, like when you say the Stellantis virtual cockpit, mm -hmm. what does the consumer see? What's, what's, <laughs> what's right? It's like, how is that different than I, I got a screen, shows me my speed, I got a screen, I can radio or whatever. Mm -hmm. Spotify. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, again, uh, it's fascinating to me. That's, uh, I think uh, we need to be creative there. Because again, if you have these virtual artifacts, right, and uh, have the possibility to visualize uh, uh, this cockpit system in browsers, right, so everybody can do it. Think about the new kind of uh, engagement that you can have with your customers. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can start to have uh, something in dealers, uh, you know, exposing new, new features, uh, you want to participate to a hackathon maybe that we can do in this dealership mm. where uh, you can contribute ideas and uh, help the Stellantis developers or a wider community to generate uh, new content or the personalization of the content because this can bring to a highly personalized experience uh, in terms of, oh, I want to have my own interface with uh, Stefano Marzani just wrote uh, everywhere. I can pay for it, right? So it's a... Uh, this kind of things that are really so you can kind of design your own own yeah. your own experience car, in a way car in a way. digital experience uh, right right I right. go back to Doug Field saying that software defined vehicles are really it's about making cars a platform for creativity Absolutely. you build the platform and then you release it on the world yeah. and it's up to the creativity of the developer some kid out there is probably not even born yet right who's going to like Absolutely. come up with something yeah. amazing we're running out of time I wanted to uh, Bring up something that you mentioned the last time we chatted. This is hilarious, and I mentioned to Johnny, and he's all aboard. Um, you know, Italian. We talked about maybe <laughs> going to a certain part of Italy where a lot of um, car manufacturers that end in I yeah. hang out. And uh, I like that part of Italy. Go, yeah. Go yeah. It's it's the part where I'm from. Ferrari. Bologna, Ferrari. Bologna, yeah. I'm from. It's called Motor Valley, right? And yeah, Modena. Modena. No, I've been yeah. there many times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Modena, Bologna, yeah. and yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. visiting Motor Valley, which we've been to, we've been we've been on Ferrari press yeah. trips and Maserati yeah. and Lamborghini, right? Food. But from a from a different perspective, right? High performance, but yes. not in the analog V12. Right. High performance yeah. processing. Yeah. yeah. Which we love. I we we can still eat. Yeah, well, yeah. well, I would be <laughs> curious what what there is to explore because we, t you know, we we're here at CES. We're, I'm, I can see I have the Kia sign in my in my view. I, there's Hyundai yeah, yeah. over here. I, I just drank some Mercedes Espresso. C Mercedes, like, I'd love to to go and explore what Absolutely. what these what the Italian sure. the, the 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 supercar manufacturers. And I know sometimes I'm guilty of doing this. They're like, well, they're just doing high, they're doing the fancy swoopy, it's, it's red or it's yellow and it's, and it's fast, but they're not really on the cutting edge of, of this space, no matter how data intensive Formula yeah. One is or racing. I think that's probably untrue. And mm -hmm. I think you, you might have um, a, a point of view on that. So I got a proposal for that. Yes. So uh, there's this very cool event, it's called Motor Valley Fest. Okay. That happens every year in spring in Modena, where you have all the fancy cars, all the fancy bikes uh, from uh, Ferrari, Maserati, Ducati, yeah, Pagani, Lamborghini, Pagani, Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's, there's this nice event. I was there last year, had a panel there, and uh, uh, at the beginning of the event, they have this uh, CEO roundtable, where you have all the CEOs of the sporty car, fancy cars, talking to each other. Right. In the backdrop, they have their product, right? The, Ferrari car, Lamborghini car, Ducati bike, and so on. And I said, it would be nice to have the digital dashboard, the digital experience 
above it, right, or below it, right, kind of in the picture to say, okay, it's, uh, this is an awesome product. So what's the digital part of it, right? So it would be let's nice go. to discuss about it in uh, yeah. more than a... Uh, I mean, spring is three months away. Let's so. do it. Yeah, yeah. Let's All go right. to Motor Valley. Yeah. By the way, okay. the organizer was here around the CES, but uh, anyway, let's uh, let's let's make go. a proper introduction. Okay. Okay. Stefano, maybe you can open yeah. some doors for us. I'm done. This and is, Yeah, and then stuff. again, restaurants. I want to really also focus. <laughs> yeah. Pastoria <coughs> Francescana. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we yeah. can talk about it. We okay. can talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? how I was introducing my episode last season? I said, I'm Stefano Marzani, Worldwide Tech Lead, blah, blah, blah. Coming from uh, the land of good food and powerful engines. There you go. <laughs> yes, I failed, to, I failed to mention. Stefano hosts uh, a podcast uh, for AWS on all things automotive. automotive. Yeah. Check it out. Oh, what's it called? All things automotive. All things automotive. Oh, it's called that's, all that's, things that's, automotive. Yes, great. I thought city. you meant he hosts. Yeah. 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 Sorry. yeah. It's all the name things automotive. Very and good. The content. And the content. Yes. Sorry, it's I haven't fantastic. heard. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, we'll connect it. We'll connect the two podcasts. Check oh, him out. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, this was great. We've run out of time. We haven't run out of things to talk about, so we'd love to have you back when we, sure. when we have another chance. Glad but to be back. Yes, but uh, Stefano, congrats again. Thank you. And yeah. thank you so much thank for you. being on The Inevitable. Thank so you. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Fun. Thank you so much. Really Pleasure. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. Um, again, the, the one thing I'm really interested in following up with uh, him and the uh, AWS folks is, when are we going to Italy? When are we going to yeah, the Motor Valley right, right. to go chat with all the fine uh, yes. Italian vehicle Wine manufacturers? Makers. I mean, vehicle makers. That yeah. end in I, yeah. Ferrari, Lamborghini, yeah. Yeah. Pagani, Pagani, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maserati, uh, and... And checking out what they're doing on the this brave new world of software defined vehicles. Soon, I mean, based on that, that podcast, soon, and you're, and you're taking me, which is great. Yes. But next, uh, going back to a little further north in Stuttgart, uh, we've got Mr. Osberg, uh, who's the head of software, chief software officer at Mercedes Benz AG. So not USA, not uh, not yeah, R and D. This is the mothership. This is the guy. Yes, and, and um, he's he's super smart, as you'll find out, and. Um, and he knows somebody from the Black Eyed Peas. That's true. We talk a little bit about that. We also we talk a little bit about where they're at in this moment because Mercedes Benz has been a leader in software defined vehicles in some of the biggest named features that you've heard of. So you'll hear about Gen, a Gen AI. You'll, you'll hear about Chat GPT. You'll hear a little bit about uh, Level Three driving and getting certified in the U.S. And level four. And you also hear that humans are very strange creatures that get lonely when they're driving. Right. Which and is all kind this, of the best part. All this really is hopefully a little bit of a prelude to a much longer conversation that we can have with Magnus in the future because he was awesome and we totally ran out of time. So please enjoy. Magnus Ostberg of Mercedes-Benz, chief software officer, also former winner of Motor Trend Software Defined Vehicle Innovator Awards. So congratulations, that was last year. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. You spent a lot of time with us. You did a panel uh, yesterday and now we have uh, time with you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's just dive in. You guys have made some news here. Uh, you've been making news within uh, the software defined vehicle space now for a while. Uh, we've talked a lot about how Johnny was actually, I think, the first person to flag it to our team that Mercedes-Benz is the first uh, car company to achieve level three, SAE level three certification um, in California and Nevada. And this happened in the fall, a summer, fall of last, last year. year. Last year, yeah. yeah. Yes? Yeah. And then uh, more, or around the same timing, maybe a little bit uh, uh, after, Mercedes-Benz was the first production vehicle manufacturer to include a Gen AI in ChatGPT in vehicle. What did, let's, let's break them up. What have been the learnings? What have you, what have you sort of su been surprised by or learned from this, uh, the, the, the drive pilot, the, your level three uh, program so far? Well, the drive pilot has been uh, a journey, really, really a journey. It's been uh, a journey that uh, the team set out uh, quite some years ago. But uh, the right. last two years has been, of course, where we've been getting a lot of publicity, a lot of, a lot of, well, successes because we were able to break through. We were able to get get the. Uh, uh, get the approval, but the the general principle uh, through the last two years, if we don't go too too long back, uh, has really been one: how can we make sure that the customers, one they once they receive it, actually can trust this system? 
how can we make sure that that is safe is there? Because we have, of course, a brand reputation to live up to. We have a responsibility to our customers uh, to to deliver upon the, that quality. But this is a new technology. Anytime you have a new technology, humans uh, tend to either misunderstood uh, or not being able to trust it. Right. So right. how can level three be understood? and different uh, that to our level two offering, because we have a great level two offering as well. But the big difference is the responsibility, right? right. There is, uh, the responsibility is the big uh, big thing. Liability is a different thing, because that is how what, what happens in court, but the responsibility is the difference. And how can you tell the customer that now the car is responsible, right? And how can you make sure that when they're level two, they know that, okay, now I am responsible. Right. Right. The handoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The handoff. No. And we call that mode confusion. Right. So we worked very, very hard to make sure that the customer understands which mode they are in. And we're very, very clear with that with these lights. And we have a color now. A right. color that is also, we got the approval for it, not just on the inside of the car, but also on the outside of right. the car. And we're working with a regula re regulatory environment to, to standardize this because we don't want to have confusion that a different... Right, so uh, if another automaker is like, hey, we think orange is good. It's like, no, you know, it's, it's, all be, it's blue, right? Is the yeah, it's a turquoise. Turquoise. Yeah. turquoise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that it doesn't uh, get confused with... A uh, car? A police car? Exactly, or or exactly, right? Right. Right. right? And that's a very good cue because we will also work with the authorities so that okay, when we then are coming into a situation where the police car wants you to stop, and he, right. then how do you go back to level two? How do you hand over responsibility? How do you make sure that when you detect a police car, you actually are saying, okay, wake up. Right, or, uh, so you have some kind of extra car communication. Exactly, we actually have microphones and cameras, of course, right? But when we detect blue lights uh, coming from the from the police cars, then you we tell the driver it's time to go back, you have to go out of, of the mode. My question is, how did Mercedes get there first? You're the first people to actually do level three and you didn't, and I've talked to a lot of them where, you know, other OEMs are like, eh, we don't really like the levels. We don't want to play that game, <laughs> you know? And, and like, and, and like, I was so impressed because I, I got a demo in, um, in a level three car and I was just so impressed that you, you, you did it because, like, everyone's been talking about autonomy, and like, and it, you just you, it, you didn't mess around, you know. It was like it was like you took it, you, you took the this is the SAE standard. We're going to take it seriously. Here it is, and it works. How did you get there first? Well, I, I must of course give the credit to the team. Sure. Right. This this is a long road investment, and it's a dedication. But from from a mindset perspective, right. We wanted to make sure that anybody who is riding in a Mercedes trust and, and, and they recognize the brand. This is the brand differentiation. That's, that's the heart, the passion we go after. And then it's all about commitment. Committing the, yourself then and your team to this goal and achieving it. And trying to stay close and, and true to your values. Because of course people like to talk it down and say it's only up to 60 kilometers an hour, 40, 45 yeah, miles for per now. hour. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we've already yeah. announced that right. I, I have the data and prove that I can do it at over 90 kilometers an hour, right? right? And the regulatory framework in Germany allows me to do that. So we're going to do that this year and we're going to prove that we're going to put it out. And when you come up to those kind of speeds, all of a sudden it becomes very appealing, right? You can go down in German on the Autobahn and if you want to go fast, if you want to go 160, 180, fine, take over control, go fast because I'm in a hurry, right? But it's like, okay, I've been driving for two hours or I have a video call conference coming in. Okay, I go over to the right lane, I put it on, I started it and it's clear. We're now in level three and now I can have my Zoom or my, uh, my Teams meeting video call for an hour, talk to my boss, concentrate on what they're doing. We can have that and I'm still you know, in one hour have transported myself 90 kilometers. Right. Which is what I need and then I can go again if I go fast. We're gonna continue to push this limit. And that's the thing is that the, we're, we're clear goals, commitment right. to that and, and a team that is just, they're rocking it. I yeah. I'll, I'll add on that and just say that you achieved this in a time where a, other companies have been really encountering some serious challenges, right? In this time frame that you talked about, the last two years, right? Argo 
AI gone, right? Ford and VW pulled that, pulled their investment out, and then we've talked a lot about this uh, yeah, all the last couple days. Cruz uh, got their certification pulled because of right. a very publicized, you know, incident. Yeah. It, in your mm -hmm. mind, from where you sit, you guys have had some success. You know, I think you're being quite modest about it. But is is the, is your autonomous roadmap? Are you guys? Do you think you're on schedule? Is the industry on schedule? Is it is it evolving the way you think autonomy, full autonomy, is going? Or or do you think that's it's a, still a little further out than, than most people. Um, I, I think I feel like five years ago, I was like, oh yeah, autonomy is around the corner. It'll mm. be here like in the next few years. Now it seems like it's a little farther out. Which which is which is more accurate? Well, um, I believe in incremental development. I believe that uh, uh, you know this leapfrogging. Sometimes you, that happens, but generally it's incremental. And you asked me before, how could the team do this? And the team did this because we weren't trying to boil the ocean. Right. We were not <laughs> trying to right. solve the universal problem right. of autonomy. Right. We were trying to solve this problem. How right. do we get to level three? How do we break through on level three? How can we do that with, the, with an understandable and, and, and still challengeable? And, and trustworthy, that's the other thing, yeah. Right. right, trustworthy, and with an ODD that doesn't include... Operational you know, design domain operational design domain, right? right. Okay. So that means which roads and to what speed. Right. Yep. So we No, and, uh, and again, like when I, I, it blew my mind. It was one of the most impressive things. Cause, you know, I, I, I forget who was, who was talking, but they said, okay, look, to do it, we use cameras, we use radar, we use LIDAR, we use a 3D map we just downloaded. We have a barometer so the car knows where it is. So in case it goes up an off ramp, it says, whoa, you're no longer on the road. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking about how other <coughs> Companies are doing it, and With I'm just like, cameras. and I'm like, they're just <laughs> joking around. Like they're not, they're not serious. And I was just, I was just like, I was just so impressed by how serious you guys te had taken it, you know. Yeah. And, and you weren't trying to drive everywhere. Boil, I like that term, boil the ocean. It was like, yeah. this is traffic jam. This is, you know, in in Los Angeles, you're gonna be sitting on the ten for you know forty minutes at two miles an hour. Why do I have to sit there? You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and it worked, and I watched it work, and I was blown away. I was like, "This is oh, you know, so it was it was just impressive." Let me Not let me yeah. yeah. Uh, now you're in this phase though, where you're really starting to talk about it. Like I think it's it's wild to me. I follow Mercedes on Instagram, and I, I've seen now these this new ad campaign you're rolling out. With I don't know the actor. What's the actor's name? Is this uh, is this good looking John Hamm? White guy. It's not John Hamm, <laughs> but they're they're talking about how he's able to like read the read the paper yeah. now, which is it's a very subtle like. Yes, this is an eyes off system yeah. when it's deployed correctly. When you when you have the handoff between two and three, it's no longer you have to be super focused. Right. The car's gonna gonna take over. I'm sure just getting to that point, the messaging to the consumer, that must have been you workshopped to death. You, <laughs> need to, you need to make sure you you're right on the right message, you're not overselling it or you don't want to undersell it either. Yeah. Like what's the what is this phase that you're in in terms of consumer sort of adoption or, or exposure? Yeah, that's, that is the, the interesting uh, activity right now. So of course, um, we needed to be credible. Mercedes have always stead, stood for uh, you know the, the aspirational uh, goal and so forth. So having a good uh, balance between, okay, what is the core of Mercedes and how can this technology then elevate it to the next level, right? If, so that, that it resonates with, uh, with our customer base but it also um, moves them a little bit further ahead, right? So many of our customers um, um, th who are on the, on, the, on the highest level of our products, the MyBox, they actually don't sit in the front. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> all yeah, the movie sure. stars, they yeah, sit in the back. They've already got autonomous driving. Exactly. Yeah, 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 like yeah, all yeah, the movie yeah. stars, <laughs> they all just sit in the back, right? Right, right? And they're sitting there and reading their newspapers and so forth. But how can we make uh, this type of uh, chauffeur, <laughs> drive pilot, uh, be something that uh, that is also for for our customers uh, who are buying an E class or buying right, a, right. Uh, and not just an S class. Exactly, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, how can we build on this? So, trying to um, work with the technologies so it makes sense for the brand and makes sense for 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 our customer base. That has been the interesting thing. And now st starting to get that because that ties to some of the other stuff that we've done here. We're really starting to work on how can we work with technology and software to create emotions or desire, right? 
and this is where it starts to get interesting and, and, and it uh, starts to, to, to be really you know, fun and cool and it's, so it's forth. It's interesting because you know, we're here at CES, this is our sixth interview we've done and, and you know, I, I'm a car guy, I come at all this as I love cars yeah. and I've you know, talked to all these people about technology. No, Word desire is is nowhere, and then to me that's always like you know they they talk about uh, like you know in, in in China you know people are really excited about they have a lidar sensor ah you know and okay that's cool it doesn't really excite me that much but like yeah there is like a really good car is desirable so it's interesting to hear someone from an OEM say yeah. that because you know, ultimately yeah. that's that's what we are trying to do here level three we want to uh, what ultimately our goal is to give back time yeah, yeah? because we believe time is luxury. And then the question is, what are you going to do with this time, right? And then you can start to have fun. Then you can either be efficient, if that is the businessman we're talking to, or the business lady, um, or it if uh, we want to uh, have really immersive, cool uh, sounds and videos or, or music. You know, this is what we're talking about when we're going to the immersive audio space, where we have Dolby Atmos integrated with the Amazon streaming services, and we're having Audible, because now we're starting to work with with this all the senses that we have around you mm. to make your mind go somewhere right right and have and we can then start to to work with with the display technologies that we're having and we can work with the AI technology to create things because now we're no longer in a situation where we are talking about safety right we're not in that position because the car right is the perfect person to be able to uh, to monitor what goes around you they're much more attentive they're, they they right. they never get tired they never sleep right. we have the redundancy so they never fail. you know yeah. fail right. right so that is then a situation where you can really start to to uh, use the time to then build on this and create emotions but you can do it safely right. Right. you can do it with trust it is and it's a so it's so on brand for mercedes to be to be thinking about these other, in, engaging the other senses from the immersive sound and all the, the visual stuff. Mercedes, I think, was the first to add that. Perfume. Oh, it, the, yeah, the perfume, the scent. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's uh, entertaining all the senses. And because and, uh, we're running a little bit out of time here. You mentioned uh, uh, AI, so I, I do want to, we, we've now had the drive pilot conversation. Uh, congrats. Let's switch gears and talk a little bit about the, this, uh, this rollout of ChatGPT in the car, Gen AI. What was the most surprising thing you, you learned from the, the experiment of, of adding this? And what, were there some really weird prompts that people were asking? Is <laughs> people do some, some crazy stuff? Uh, g give, us a <laughs> give us some feedback here uh, on how that went. Well, uh, let me uh, set, set the context before I, I get to, to the fun example. But the, uh, what, what we are doing is, of course, we're energizing a 138 year old company and infusing software speed into this company and uh, and and basically transforming it so that we can uh, move into the next 130 successful years uh, of the company. To do that, we of course need to set up an infrastructure. We need to infuse a, a software-based platform and we call that the MBUS. So it's an architecture both in the car and, and off in the cloud. So we have our, our, our own hybrid cloud set up for, for the world. Um, and with this base, this infrastructure, I call it uh, a platform, but also I refer to it as a, as a stage, we can then bring different partners into our platform and deploy it very quickly. And uh, people got surprised how quickly we could then bring in and deploy ChatGPT uh, and that is because we've laid the foundation, we have the infrastructure, we have the people, we have right. the know-how to do that. Right. Once we brought in then ChatGPT, and we also then convinced our own company that we could do something called a beta program, unheard of for, for Mercedes, right. Right? Right. 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 right? Complete unheard of. But we can say that, hey, this is a voluntary program, let's see how the customer actually get a benefit from this new technology. How can large language models be something that they benefit? Do they want it? Do they like it? Uh, don't they care? What so what'd you learn? <laughs> we got now deployed to 900,000 people here in North America. The okay. sign up rate was tremendous. And first of all, what we learned is that the usage then of the speech, the Hey Mercedes, is, you know, go through the roof. You know, generally, yes, 50% more. Second, 
we learned that there is actually a large uh, number that just want to chat with it. <laughs> They're like bored, lonely, bored. Yeah, okay, okay, go, okay. Like, like we're doing. Keep going. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah, we're yeah. doing. Right, 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 right. Keep going. Okay. Because it's it's actually uh, the the just the the uh, it could of course be a trend. It's fun in the beginning and then it tapers off, but. When, when we then thought about that and got that feedback, we said that, okay, this is not just a tool. We need to tie that back to the other things we talked about, emotions, yeah. right? right? How can we now make sense out of this? So that's why when we in our uh, virtual assistants, the MBUX virtual assistant that we just uh, announced, we said, okay, we gotta give this, uh, this uh, assistant um, Emotions, or we got to give this uh, this assistant also character. <laughs> so that's why we, yeah. yeah no, uh, I, I, you, your, your <laughs> mind, like like with AI in general, your mind runs to like very dark places, not dark, but like fun, weird, fun weird places. But yeah, okay. Yeah. Just trying, I'm trying to imagine Mercedes character. But go, go, go ahead. So yeah. we, we didn't want to, of course, go too far with it. Uh, I'm, I'm actually quite excited to see what Gordon uh, Wagner, our chief, uh, chief designer, is going to do with this. Oh, Gordon. Oh, uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 When we turn the mics off, I can tell you some stories. <laughs> yeah. But in the beginning, so yeah. we, we, we came up with this star cloud uh, uh, avatar that is the Persona. So we created these personas that uh, that also then can be you know neutral. It also can be empathetic. Uh, it can be you know alertive. Say hey, there's yeah. a warning coming up. Hey, ta pay attention. And then changing the voice of that. So looking at how can we use this technology now to <laughs> depending on if you just want to chat or if you're uh, if you're happy or yeah. if you're sad. Right, how right. can we how can we use this? That's the biggest learning. That's, huh. That's the biggest learning. That's huh. Not what I thought you were going to say. That is wild. <laughs> so how yeah. about were there any surprises of things that you thought were going to happen but then didn't happen? Like like dead ends. Like oh you know people started uh, were asking for dinner reservations. Oh no no they didn't do that at all. Was there anything like that? So uh, we also learned that this is a tool. Right, and we need to add and combine uh, tools with that. So natural language models, together with large language models and certain rules, needs to be put in place so that we. Because you've all heard about the hallucinations, mm -hmm. right? And and uh, one thing that is very important is that if you're not just having a conversation like you and I, but you're actually having an intention, you want to achieve something. Of course, you want the natural fluency in the dialogue, but you want a precise and clear and correct answer. Right. You don't want AI to start getting creative. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. 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 And that's that's basically <laughs> what we learned. Uh, and that's the dead ends that, you know, it's not a one stop shop. You can use it for everything. You got to be smart about it. And that's the biggest learning. And then this is, again, coming back to what we want to do with MBS. We want to be able to have a platform so we fast can iterate and learn. And that's what we're achieving now, and that is what we're we think is going to be our edge. Okay. So mm. uh, let, hang on. So, we, uh, so w and one of the the we, we had a, a our our colleague Eric Tingwall was on your trip to CES, and he chatted with I think one of your uh, your colleagues, uh, and apparently, this is a test. This is this platform you built, and you were able to slide in uh, ChatGPT as the Gen AI, pr uh, Gen AI provider. But going forward for production, it won't be. Chat GPT, it'll be another uh, AI system. Is that my understanding? Do I have that correct? Or we haven't announced it yet. Okay. Uh, so it's it's open. We're going through the R evaluation, uh, and um, this is again uh, the the power of having our platform, having control of it, and have the know how that. We know that it's probably not going to be one. Uh, it depending on parts of the world. It depends on a lot of things. You know, I'm, sure. I'm we're in a regulatory environment. Uh, it's also a geopolitical environment. Yeah. Uh, so we need to be able to be flexible. Just like uh, I need to have different partners for different parts of the world, I then also need to be able to to work with this. So it and it's of course also a, a sourcing topic, right? Okay. So that's uh, we're, we'll be coming out soon, Erad. The partnerships. Let me let me ask you th this though: is from a, it was it's very buzzy. You guys were again. It was it made all the headlines. Like his chat, chat GPT was so hot last year. Right. Does the brand of the Gen AI? Do you think it matters? Does it help? Does it help? Does it help elevate? Or is it really like for insiders that like only you guys care that it was this guy's AI versus another? Do you think the consumer cares that you were using what what AI you you partner with? Uh, 
I would say uh, last year it definitely uh, was was a matter. Um, at the end of the day, for me uh, and and for the feedback, I, it's all about the quality. Right. Right. Am I am I getting what I want, um, uh, and and can that live up to the brand expectation? So for us, it's it's um, making sure that we can live up to our brand expectation. So when we put a technology out, it's got to live up to our brand expectation. Okay. Can you talk a little bit before we're done about uh, I think it's called Drive Sound, the Will I Am program? Because <laughs> I, I I I drove the thing around. Explain what it is. <laughs> There it is. It yeah. is. Yeah. It is. Okay. It actually is this. You, okay. DJing. Right. Using it's DJing. Okay. It's your, your the tunes that you love, the right. tunes that you're you're uh, familiar with, and so forth. Only time that a tune ever changes is when you go to the club. Right. It's the only club time where the DJ makes that uh, tune or that music you like into something else, into something new. Imagine that in the car. Right. So you are then the DJ. Right. Right. Depending on how you drive and how you so, how you accelerate. So yeah, if I can describe it, real quick, it was kind of like you're at a red light and the the pre verse, like the music before, there's a little bit of verse, is sort of looping quietly in the background, and then as you hit the accelerator, suddenly the chorus comes in, yeah. and then as you turn the wheel, it's like adding in scratching or whatever it was yeah. doing. Yeah. And <laughs> it was it was. I mean, I got to. Sounds I like a hallucination. To me. Will I am and I do not <laughs> share the same taste in music, <laughs> but the technology. I was like this. I, I was thinking like stuff I like. This could be very cool. Exactly. Yeah. Swedish death metal. Yeah. So we, yeah. So you had some good double bass. You know. Yeah, but, but yeah. that's the thing, right? right? It doesn't. It's not about the, the the type of music. Right. But every music has the same. You have the beat. Yeah. The beat comes. All right. So your foot. And when you're playing drums, the beats come from the foot. The same thing. The gas is your beat. Right. Depending on what, if you're double drums or yeah, harder. Yeah, yeah. And then the way you turn, this is where you get your, your vo uh, vocals and others to come in. And, and yeah. And, and, uh, it was pretty, it was, I got to say, I, th it, it was, I mean, it's a, it was a little gimmicky, but it was also like, it worked and it, di it, it, there was, it was, it was very smartly smoothed out. So it n even, you know, it's not. It never skipped or like immediately jumped. It like it's yeah. it sounds it sounds like it's it was personal written that soundtrack way. Yeah. based on your driving behavior. Yes. Right? Yes. So, okay. Yeah. It was pretty it was pretty cool. And I could see how if it was like if you could hook that up to autonomous, it'd be pretty interesting because you'd be physically experience you're not in control, but you'd be physically experiencing this yeah. with the sound. It's it kinda yeah, cool. It's yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. as I knew from the start, we ran out of time. <laughs> Long before we ran out of topics, I have like a hundred more yeah, things to ask turn. you. Yeah, tank turn, electric G wagon tank turn. I know turn. the well, greatest innovation of, <laughs> of 2024. <laughs> we're gonna, yeah, we're, baby. We're gonna need to have <laughs> we're gonna have, need, need to have Magnus on again, yes. where we can go the full two hours uh. and pick his brain about the future of Mercedes Benz and software defined vehicles. But I do want to thank you so much for taking time out of your super busy schedule yeah, here at we CES. Uh, and for just uh, everything you've done uh, with us here in the last couple of years. So thank you so much, Magnus. Thank you for having me. And glad to be back. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The Inevitable Vodcast, brought to you by the all-electric Nissan Aria. Inspired by the future, designed for the now.